there is a limit to the amount of time and effort you can do each day which means when you are earning money based on your own efforts, even in a business of your own or your own company, because let's say you have your own company trading, or let's say you have your own company as a restaurant, or let's say you have your own company doing a service, such as an accounting firm, which is your own business, <clears throat> and you're doing a service. <clears throat> These companies require your effort to earn money. So when you're earning money, based on your own efforts, your money is limited to a degree. So what some people do is they what's called duplicate their efforts. If they have a, an accounting business and there's a one man accounting firm, they're their own business, they decide to hire some additional accountants and therefore they're duplicating your efforts. So those are the two ways in business when you're earning money. The other way is rather than you earn money, the other method is when money is working for you. Instead of you working for money, money is working for you. This is basic investing. This is when you have money and you put money into a business and without your efforts, that money begins to grow. Or you have money in some type of investment vehicle where that money each month gives you more money. That is how super wealth has been created. Now, a lot of you aren't at the super wealth mindset yet. You just want to make some money. But I'm just giving you this little tidbit because if I can plant this seed right now, this could be a desire. And even though it may not be a desire that you think about all the time or most of the time, it could be a desire that you begin to think about little by little of I want to be at a place where I don't have to work. I don't want to be at a place where my money is giving me an income of 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month. My money is working for me. And now I have complete financial freedom. And then I can start doing all types of different things, travel. I can look at new businesses. I can learn how to paint. I can do all these different things. So maybe I'm planting that seed right now. So you start transmitting that thought process. This is how it works. And then later, that will become a reality for some of you. So that's the first concept. A couple of basic concepts you want to consider. None of these are required, but here are some things to consider. And the reason I'm giving them to you is I'm planting seeds. This is why uh, last night somebody said, what the heck did you do to us? We are feeling so empowered and so confident and so fantastic because I'm in this lecture, what you don't know is I'm using certain language patterns, which is putting embedded commands for you to consider planting seeds, if you will, so that you start thinking about them in a positive way. I'm giving you a lot of positive things to think about. I'm planting a lot of seeds, doing it on purpose. There are a lot of techniques that I'm employing. And these thoughts are beginning to germinate in many of you, and you're beginning to think about it just, just a little. But as you think about it just a little, your brain is putting out that vibration, which is causing an attraction of more like thoughts. And these thoughts are, feel really good because the thought I'm giving you feels good. Therefore, like feeling thoughts come in and they still about, begin to start to build up, which is why the more you listen to these CDs over and over and over and over and over and over again, and the other CDs that we're going to recommend, and the more books uh, that I recommend, if you become part of the global information network and get the CDs every month and the books every month. If you purchase some of the other CD packages that we have that I'm going to suggest or come to other, some of these other seminars, it begins, we're planting so many seeds and getting your brain working almost on autopilot. <clears throat> you're beginning to attract more like-minded thoughts. So I'm going to give you a couple things to consider here. A couple concepts that will help you in terms of wealth creation, making money. One, there should be a focus as one of your chief aims, something that you're focusing on, of getting out of debt. Now, there's a difference between debt and credit. Debt is bad, credit is good. Debt is basically owing lots of money that has been borrowed on depreciating assets or no assets at all. 
basically what it means is you buy a car and you're paying on that car. And every year the car becomes less of less value. It goes down in value, but you keep paying on it. So you basically bought something, borrowed money, and every year what you purchased goes down in value, but you keep paying on it and you're paying interest. Credit card debt is debt. A home mortgage is not debt, that's credit, because you purchase an appreciating asset. So credit is good, debts are bad. Ideally, in order to free up the flow of energy, and this is how energy flows when it comes to money, your thought process will flow much easier when you, are, when you have reduced your debt and you're on the way out of debt and you're only using credit. All the thoughts flow easier and energy around money flows easier. So an objective or a goal should be to reduce or get out of debt. And you can go to a website called debtcures.com. And there are a lot of other good uh, websites and books on debt reduction and techniques on how to reduce debt. But debtcures.com has a very good, uh, good, some good books on there and, and different materials. So consider getting out of debt. And you all can get out of debt. You all can reduce your debt. You can reduce your debt as, by simply as using this technique, saying, I want to be debt free. Don't say, I want to get out of debt, because you're focusing on debt. Say, I want to have no bills. I want to be debt free. Next, you should consider starting right now saving 10% of what you earn. Just take 10% off the top of whatever you get and put it away in a savings account. You can put it in any type of investment vehicle. You can just put it in a savings account. You can use that money and buy gold or silver and just put that in a safe. You can use that money and just put it in a savings account and once, uh, once every three months, go and just buy some stocks or bonds and just keep it in an investment account. But just start shoveling away 10% and never touch it. This also frees up energy because it starts to increase your level of belief on the fact that you could start accumulating a net worth and some wealth. This little technique dramatically changes the way you think. It is very powerful. Start saving 10%. Next, you want to reduce how much taxes you pay. How do you do that? Well, first off, if you do form a corporation, you can reduce taxes in many cases. So you want to look at how much taxes you're paying and reduce the amount of taxes you pay. Because whatever you save in taxes is real cash in your hand that you can use to create more money. Next is you want to reduce your insurance premiums. If you were to just sit down and look at all the insurance premiums you pay, review the, your policies and start doing some shopping, every one of you can dramatically save money on your insurance premiums. And all of your insurance premiums, I can guarantee you, you're overpaying. So if you reduce the money you're spending on insurance premiums, that's extra cash. You just got a raise. If you reduce taxes, which you can all do very easily. Just have them reviewed or start a corporation. And if you reduce insurance premiums, you've all just gotten an instant, instant raise. Next, use corporations for credit lines and OPM, which stands for other people's money. When you start making money, you have to understand People always think, well, I don't have any money. You don't need any money to make money. When you form a corporation, and you can go to LegalZoom.com, legal it has all the forms there, very inexpensively. You can form a corporation in any country in the world. There are major tax advantages of forming corporations, but corporations also allow you access to lines of credit that you wouldn't have as an individual person. So all of a sudden, instantaneously, and most people don't even know this, if you just form a corporation, you now have access to credit, not debt, credit, which you didn't have access five minutes earlier. And you can get lines of credit up to a million dollars, which is really something to consider. 
Next, there's a couple what we call character traits of people that have money and something you should consider working on. If you work on these character traits, you'll feel better and you'll attract more money in your life. One is develop a pleasing personality. And there's a great book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I would encourage all of you to take the Dale Carnegie course. When you develop a pleasing personality, you attract more and better people in your life. Whatever personality you have, you will attract like-minded people. If you have a pleasing personality, you will attract like-minded people. Things will be easier in business. You'll get more accomplished with a pleasing personality. Next, work on improving your communication skills, your persuasive skills, your sales skills, and your negotiation skills. In business, you will be using some of these skills. This is definitely on the right side of the training balance scale. The skills, the techniques, so there are some sales techniques, there are some communication techniques, there are some persuasive techniques. For example, one communication technique, which is very powerful, is learn how to ask questions and listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth, use them proportionally. So when you're meeting people, talk less, listen more. And when you're asking questions, use the six honest serving men and use them till you'll die. They are what, when, and where, who, how, and why. I can give a whole, again, two days on communication or pleasing personality. And I'm going to give you some books to review and look at. The reason we don't spend a lot of time with that in this particular session is it really is irrelevant in the grand scheme of things if you're doing the technique. Touching on these things here, but letting you know that it's not that important. I'm just planting some seeds. Next, manage your priorities. Some people call this time management. Time management is wrong. It's really priority management. It's being able to get more done in less time with less stress because you're not stressed out about getting things done. If your thinking is right, you won't make it, it you won't even feel any stress at all. But a good technique to reduce stress, because we've been so drilled and ingrained and have so many habits about getting things done is to use some proper priority management system. I would recommend a company called Priority Management. You can Google them. They have websites and offices all over the world. It is the system that I use. Now, for years, they had a paper-based system. Now, they've gone to a computer-based system. Do not use the computer-based system. It does not work anywhere closely as effectively as the paper-based system. So if you do use the priority management system, use the paper-based system. And lastly, the things that you want to do, that successful people do, and this is really more important than any other skill, All right, Familia, what's up, what's up, Grand Rising? Happy Thursday. I am super blessed and super grateful to be on this call with each and every single one of you. Um, grand Rising, you know, Grand Grand Rising, grandest of risings, big happy smiles. Yes, cheesy smiles because life is so amazing. Life is so good. Life is just filled with so much amazing, you know, blessings and alignments and wisdom and we have the best leader in the world who is God leading the way for us. And we are just so extremely thankful for every single person um, that jumps on this call and learns and gets, you know, the value from what it is that we got going on here. And I have a really good call for you guys today as well. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited to get it started. Hope everybody is having a blessed morning. Um, hope everybody did their morning routine this morning as well. Um, I see a lot of individuals here. Yes, yes, yes. Hope you guys are enjoying listening to KT in the morning. Um, so much value, as you guys can see. He's not only putting us on to like the sauce mentally, but he's putting us on to 
you know, how to save money, how to, you know, how to how to create business credit, um, how to save money on taxes. And there's just so much stuff that, you know, we're sometimes not even aware of. But, you know, KT puts us on and um, those those audios, the ones that I've been playing, they're on YouTube, actually. Um, I just put your wishes, your command um, CD. They have them on their CDs now. Um, the old ones that they had up there, um, they've gotten deleted. Um, the ones that had like, you know, hundreds and thousands of views, but there's one that's brand new that were, were just posted a month ago, actually. Um, and, and, and they're all there. Um, a few of them. So, uh, you should check them out. If you could find some of them, they're good. Not, I don't think, I don't know if they have all of them, but they have them on Spotify as well. Take advantage of them while they're there. They will be deleted eventually. Um, the ones that they, that were there before, they got deleted, as you can see. Um, they have some from old, but eventually I feel like they're all going to be taken down. So just um, so I think it's important KT took them down himself and his team. Maybe, you know, maybe it was him, you know, because, you know, people pay a lot of money for this stuff. Um, people pay a lot of money for that information that we're getting for free on, on YouTube. So, um, uh, what do I just get on YouTube? Yeah, you can get them on YouTube for sure, 100%. But um, let's get this call started. Let's start first off, as you guys know, express some gratitude. Um, I am so grateful and everything for everything that we have right now. So let's start off by expressing one thing that we are grateful for. What's one thing that you guys are grateful for this morning? Express it in the chat box. I am grateful for God. I am grateful for family. I am grateful for my health. I am grateful for my mom, my dad. I'm grateful for my little brother. I'm grateful for my goddaughter, Dariana. I'm extremely grateful for my team, the leaders within my organization. I'm grateful for um, I'm grateful for the wisdom. I'm grateful for my mentors. I'm grateful for Katie. I'm grateful for my Instagram family. Uh, I'm grateful for the coffee I had this morning. I'm extremely grateful for just so many amazing things that are happening in my life right now um all the way from my mental to my spirituality to my emotions to everything i'm just so so thankful for everything guys and you know the most important thing that we can do is express that gratitude fam so um let's keep spreading that word guys let everybody know one last time that mornings with nano is live um let everybody know because we're about to start right now so let everyone know that mornings with nano is live I'm super excited for it, um, and I'm really looking forward to this call. I think that a lot of people are going to get value from this call um, and everything that's about to come. So I'm excited. I'm blessed. Uh, who do we have here? Let's see. We got Drew in the, the fam. We got Drew here. We got Emily here. We got Daniel here. Um, we have a lot of people here. So let's do it. So let's get this call started. So today's topic is called Faith is Application. OK, and, um, you know, I'm going to tell you guys how this how this actually came about. So yesterday, as you guys know, I've been I've been moving around a lot, networking, talking to people. Um, the, the events have been going amazing, by the way. Um, and everything has just been so aligned with, you know, everything that I've been doing. And, you know, I always go to these events with just certain intentions. And I've met so many people and, you know, I've gotten so much value and you know, just the experience overall has been incredible. And um, yesterday we were we were at one of the events and I was sitting with my sister, uh, Katie. Um, and Katie is uh, Jason Brown's wife. And, you know, she's very God driven. And, you know, she was telling me about the VU conference and, you know, is the VU conference is a church conference that they had in Miami uh, last week, which was awesome. And she was telling me all about it. And, you know, how it changed her life and everything that it has done for her. And then she introduced me to somebody. And she introduced me to this individual that was very uh, God driven. And she was like, yo, this guy right here, you know, he knows all about, you know, he's beyond the Bible. Like he's studied the Bible. He knows the word, you know, he's already getting into some other things. And, you know, when she told me that, like, I was like, I wish you didn't tell me that because now I want to have a conversation with this guy. So, you know, she starts telling me about this guy and she's like edifying him, but like indirectly, like she's just like indirectly, like having a conversation with me and just telling me how, 
how how um how much wisdom he has and how how connected he is and how you know so much stuff about this guy like just indirectly like basically edifying him so it's so funny because i went i was walking around and i saw him and i realized that he was sitting down so i literally went and sat down next to him and i introduced myself i kind of already knew him um but i like i sat next to him because but the moment she told told me that i was kind of like i right, i need to talk to this guy I, at some point today i need to talk to this guy and me being the student that i am you know i i went up to him and i talked to him and i let him know like yo what's up you know my name is nano so on and so forth and i let him know like yo look i heard that you know you you're, you're super connected and you know you're very connected with the bible he's and he starts telling me how he's like yeah bro like you know i'm i'm so and so age and you know i'm a, i've already studied the bible like i'm already past the bible he said he was studying like hebrew scriptures and you know putting things together like he he understands the word on a different level you know he he he's memorized um he's memorized scriptures from the bible and he could tell you them you know, verbatim, like literally repeat them to you verbatim. And I start asking them a ton of questions. And dude, I literally sat there with my phone out, like, yo, you mind if I take notes? And I was just asking him super intentional questions, like intentional question after intentional question, intentional question. And I'm just there taking notes, taking notes, taking notes, taking notes, taking notes, taking notes. And one of the things that I had asked him, you know, was about, why is it that so many individuals, you know, never get to the next level? Why is it that, you know, I was, I was, I was kind of like explaining to him, you know, like, how is it that I can help the people on my team get to that next level? You know, cause I was, I, I was kind of asking him, I, I wanted to see his view on things cause I was kind of putting myself in the position of my leaders. Right. And in and, and my position as well. And, and I was telling him like, why is it that sometimes, you know, we, we stay, I wouldn't say stuck in the same position, but why is it that sometimes we are in the same position over a period of time and, and and sometimes it feels like we can't get to that next level? Like, what is it? And that's when he told me faith is application. And I said, OK, faith is application, but break that down a little bit more to me. What do you mean by faith is application? He said application is the physical proof that you have faith and belief in what you're going for. I'm going to repeat that again. Application is the physical proof that you have faith and belief in what you're striving to do. So, for example, I want to make seven figures, okay? My application of the information that I learned is me having faith that God is leading me in the right direction towards that, towards that goal, right? Every step that I take, me, me buying a book, me, you know, going to an event, me talking to 10 people a day, me jumping on a call, me doing my morning routine, the application of the actions that I got to take is me having faith that God is leading me in the right direction. Okay. That's what he explained to me. And he sat there and he was explaining that to me. And it started to make a lot of sense because remember the biggest test that you're going to face in the whole entire journey. What test is it guys? The test of what is going to be the biggest test that we, that we face. Okay. During this journey, what's going to be the hardest and probably the biggest test that we have to face. Type it in the chat box. The test of what? The test of faith. Can you believe in the unseen? That's the biggest test that we got to take. So if you think about it, if that's the biggest test that we have to take, okay, and application is faith, the reason why there's so many people who haven't gotten to the next level, the reason why there's so many people that haven't, that haven't been able to level up is because they're not applying what they're learning. They're not actually diligently applying what they are learning. So if you're not applying, then there's no faith. There's no belief because if you were applying, then that meant you have faith. That meant that you knew that if you applied this, God is going to open the doors for you. 
right? That's that's what he's saying. He's saying the application of the information is you having faith that God is going to clear the path for you. He's going to help you with the right people. He's going to put the right circumstances, the right people, the right circumstances, the right situations in your life to make that goal a reality. But if you don't apply what you learn, then you don't have faith. And that's the biggest test that you have to pass. So when he said that, I know that that's some of people's biggest problem is that they don't apply. And remember, guys, application is not something that you just do one day. Okay. Application is not one thing. It's not. It's just not applying in one day. So, like, for example, I give you guys the example of the weekly evaluations as an example. Weekly evaluations, I tell you guys on Sundays, ask yourself three questions every Sunday. What did I do well this week? What didn't I do well this week? And what am I going to improve on this upcoming week? Right? That's something that you have to apply every Sunday. Just because you did it one Sunday doesn't mean that you are now deserving of what you've asked for. You only did it one time. But if you do it every Sunday over a 90-day period, over a six-month period, you've proved that you can apply the information four times a month over a period of time. You understand what I'm saying? So it, it, it's about the application of the information. Another thing, morning routine. I don't think there's nothing more that I talk about on these calls than morning routine. I talk about it all day, every single day. Morning routine, the importance of it is the key that opens all doors, right? If you do your morning routine today, you do it and then you do it again tomorrow, but then you don't do it, you know, the three other days or the four other days. That's not what makes you deserving. Remember, application is faith. So every day that you wake up and do your morning routine, that is you increasing your faith that is going to work in your favor. And when I looked back until when I became that six figure earner, when I was first on my six figure journey, when I tell you guys the stories about 2019, OK, I remember going 100 days straight. Straight. I was making two thousand dollars a month. And for 110 days straight, almost four months straight, I didn't take a day off my morning routine. Like I was just because I got I kind of got it in that groove and I and I wanted to see how long I could go without taking a day off my morning routine. So like I got into a group. So my, my first goal was to go a whole month, 30 days. Right. And, and this was before I even understood this information. This was even before I, I, I even got close you know, to God the way I am now. But I remember at that time, I was like, yo, if I want to be a six-figure earner, I need to prove that I can even do my morning routine for 30 days. Like, if I can't prove to myself that I can do it for 30 days, then how do I, how can I even be asking for six figures if I can't even do a morning routine for 30 days, which is simple and this for me. And it's for me, this is for me. I ask, this is what I want. But I got to be able to have this. So, I did it for 30 days. And then once I did it for 30 days, I'm like, why would I take a day off? Let me keep the compound effect going. So then I said, all right, I'm going to just, I, I even, I even forgot about the, I forgot about, um, you know, doing it goals at a time. I said, I'm going to just keep doing this until I take the day off. I want to see how many days I can go. And then I did it all of June. Boom. Then I went and did it all of July. And I did it while I was on the road though, too. Like it didn't matter. Yo, there was times that it didn't matter. There were there were times where I had to do it no matter what. So, bro, I would be on an airplane on my way to another city and I was doing my morning routine on the airplane, literally meditating on the airplane like this, like in my seat. I would be in the middle seat meditating like this. And meditating and then I'll take out my book, read my book and then I'll write in my journal and stuff like that. Like I was literally like practicing gratitude like Finding a way, like I could not go a day without doing it. Like there were times I would be like, for example, I may have forgot to do it throughout the day. And I would literally, and I would literally tell like, if I was at a leader's house or I was, yo, do you have a room or a backyard that I could go to? I just need like about an hour, bro. I just gotta, I gotta get this work done. Like I was to that point where I was getting it done. 
I like, yo, give me, give me a time. Yo, give me like an hour in this room right here. You got an hour where I could just do something right here. And I would go in the room and I would sit there and meditate and I would read my book for 15, 20 minutes and I would journal. It was, it was a priority to me. And I did it for a total of 110 days straight, straight. And the result of it was I went from making 2000 a month to 12,000 a month. Like that. And, and think about it. I went from being broke in the summer to by the end of the summer, I was basically now, I wouldn't say rich, but I was making, you know, a lot more money. You know, I went from not being able to help my parents with the bills to being able to help my parents with the bills. You know, I went from, you know, eating, eating bacon, egg and cheeses in the deli stores to eating nice steaks and lobster and you know, I, I I was able to do more because I was vibrating at a whole nother level. But when I sit down and I think about it, it was the faith that I was able to, you know, create through the application of the morning routine every single day. It was every day. It was every day, the application of it. And this is what he told me yesterday. He said this. He said, discipline and commitment is what makes you deserving. He said, he said, whatever you want, God already wants you to have it. So if you want six figures, God wants you to have it. You want seven figures. You want that car. You want that house. You want this. You want to travel. You want a better life for your family. God already wants you to have everything that you ask for. He said the discipline and the commitment is what makes you deserving of it. The discipline and the commitment. And if we look it up, guys, look, we could look up discipline, right? What is discipline? And my definition from what, what KT says, KT says, discipline is the ability to give yourself a command and follow it. That's what discipline is. Right? That's all it is. Discipline is the ability to give yourself a command and follow it. Right? If we look up the definition of commitment, right? The state or quality of being dedicated to a cause, activity, or etc. Committed, which means through the ups, through the downs, through everything, you still show up. So think about it. If discipline and commitment are the things that make us deserving, then that's the areas in our life that maybe we need to fix. We need to improve on. That's sometimes what it is. And that's what he was breaking down to me yesterday. He said, look, Nano, there's certain tests that you're going to have to pass. And he said, it's like school. And he said, it's like school. If there's that test that you haven't passed, then you're going to have to repeat that test over and over and over and over and over again until you pass it. Until you pass it. Because whatever you want already wants you. Whatever it is that you want already wants you. And like they say, in life, we don't get what we want. In life, we get what we deserve. And what makes us deserving, guys? Type it in the chat box. I'm going to repeat it again. In life, we don't get what we want. In life, we get what we deserve. And what is it that makes us deserving, guys? I just finished typing it. What makes us deserving of what we want? Discipline and commitment. Discipline and commitment. And then the discipline and the commitment is what proves that we have faith. So you see how that all goes hand in hand, right? You having discipline and commitment proves that you have faith that God is guiding you in the right direction. And that's the key. And I think that these are areas that we all have to improve on. We all have to improve on our discipline. We all have to make sure that we are truly committed. And this is where this summer is going to prove to a lot of us who's really committed and who's not. Who's really going to stay locked into the vision through the next few months while there's distractions, there's parties, there's this, there's that. Or are you going to allow yourself to fall into that and then come back in September and October and be like, all right, now let's lock in. I, I slacked off all summer. No, bro, you're not deserving if you do that. 
You're not deserving if you do that. You're deserving if you can stay consistent through the summertime, through the most distracting times. Can you stay the course? Can you put yourself in a position to win from now? And that is super important because speaking, speaking it is not enough. There has to be physical movement. We got to understand that. Speaking, me saying I am a six-figure earner, I am a seven-figure earner, I am going to retire my family, speaking is not enough. There has to be a physical movement to everything. Okay? And one thing we all got to understand is this. I asked him a very important question. I said, I said, bro, so how does it work with patience and you know, giving things time to, you know, manifest and for them to become a reality. That's what I asked him. I said, yo, what, what's your take on patience? And, you know, once you speak something like, you know, the time that it takes for it to become a reality. He said, love is the definition of patience. That's what he said to me. He said, love is the definition of patience. He said, if you love something, you would wait for it. If you truly love it, he said, love is everything. Consider everything along the journey a joy. Love everything. Love the challenges. Love the people that leave your business. Love the obstacles. Love the wins. Love the downs. Love everything. Consider it all a joy. Okay? If you ever quit, and you ever had someone quit, right? Put a one in the chat box if you ever had someone quit your business or stop doing what it is that you guys are doing. Put a one in the chat box if you ever had somebody quit your business in any kind of shape, way, or form, right? He said, if they left your business, it's because they lacked love for the business. He said, if they left, it was because of a lack of love. Because if they loved it, they would still be here. If they loved it, they would still be here. But they didn't. They didn't have love for the business. They didn't have love for the journey. They were doing it for other it, they were uh, they were doing it for something more that more for them. See what I'm saying? If you guys truly love this, you guys won't ever quit on this. You guys won't. If that's that's why I haven't quit. People ask me all the time, bro. You've been in this almost five years, bro. You, I, I know people that know my story. People are like, yo, Nano, I know your story, OG. Like, bro, you've been through it all. You've made six figures. You've lost it. You've built organizations. You've had people do you wrong. You've had this. How come, bro? You've never quit, bro. I said because, bro, this is what I love to do. I love to help people. I love the journey. I love the challenges. This is what I is. This is what it's all about. And it's so important that you guys understand that. It's so important that you guys understand that. Whenever you see someone leave your business or leave what we do, it's because they lack love. They lack love. They don't, they don't, they don't have, they, they truly never loved it in the first place. Because if they would have loved what they do, they would have still been here. Remember, you got to love what you do. You got to be able to do this through the days that you're not making money. You got to make it through those days too. That's what, that's what proves your love. Can you push through those days where things are not the way that you want them to? Because it's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows. Which is important that you guys understand that. And he explained something to me. And this is and this is when I knew that I needed to be more tapped in. He said, he said, 
he said, Neno, when you're going through challenges, you know, what is, what is, you know, what is a, what is a quote or a scripture from the, from the Bible that you can use, okay, to battle that, that challenge, to battle that obstacle. And you know me, I, I'm going to go with the, with the one that everybody knows, you know, the no weapon against me shall prosper and so on and, and, and so on and so forth. So he tells me, he tells me, tell me, tell me, tell me a scripture that you would use in a, in a situation where you're being challenged or you're being tested and, you know, somebody's trying to come at you. And, you know, I went with the idea of that. He said, he said, that's cool, but there's so many other ones, you know, that's the one that we all know, but you know, there's this one. And he started telling me another one. And he said, then there's this one. And then there's another one. And I realized how tapped in he was. Right. Okay. And it's important that you guys understand this stuff. Very, very, very important that you all understand what I'm saying right now. He's base. He was basically saying that there are words and scriptures in the Bible that can help you fight. Okay certain challenges, certain obstacles, and people that come into your life. And he started to break it down to me where it, it was in a way where every time you go through it, you need to have a word, right? There needs to be, that's why you, you learn the word. You learn the word so that you can speak it back in times of in times of triumph, in times of challenges, to remind you that you are connected, that you have faith, that this is what it is right here, okay? You're going through something. There is power in you speaking that word, right? I could do all things through Christ. That strengthens me, right? You Remember, just speaking that word, you're speaking it. I can do all things, even though it seems hard, even though I'm going through this challenge, even though this person left my business, I can do all things. And you speak it and no weapon against me shall boom. And you start speaking these words. And guess what? You'll start having things completely change in your life. Because the word, like CJ said, the word is the shield. Okay. It is so important. And I need you guys all to understand this stuff. This is when, when he said that, I was like, man, th there's a lot for me to learn. And he said that if you are not spiritually aligned, you can't grow. You can't grow if you're not spiritually aligned. You cannot grow if you are not spiritually aligned. You can't grow. It's tough. It's tough, right? The only way you activate faith is through activity. You activate faith through activity. I told you guys this yesterday. You got to apply this information. I teach a lot of great information. I give you guys a lot of great books. I give you guys a lot of my daily methods of operations, habits, and all of these great things. I told you guys, make a list of the things that make you uncomfortable and go out there and do it. I know how important application is. Some of us may not be applying as much as we're supposed to be. And maybe that's the reason why we haven't been able to get to that next level. Okay. And you got to understand that God will never hold you back. You hold yourself back. You just haven't passed the test. And that is so true. God will never hold me back. Why would he hold me back if he wants me to have what I want? The thing is that I haven't passed the test yet. Take the pressure off of God and take accountability for your own actions. So much people put all the pressure on, on the Father, on God. Take the pressure off of the God, right? Take the pressure off of him 
and take accountability. It's on you. You haven't passed the test. You haven't studied enough. You haven't you haven't done your morning routine consistent enough. Right? You haven't applied the information long enough. You haven't stayed consistent long enough. The moment something happens, you stop putting in the work. The moment someone leaves your business, you stop putting in the work. The moment anything happens, you de-rank, this happens, that happens, this is happening in the world, you put in the work. Faith is activated through activity. The moment you're inactive, you lack faith. That's you lacking faith. You're inactive. You lack faith. If you had faith, you would stay active in activity, working, doing the work, doing the doing the day to days, doing the events, doing the prospecting, doing the studying. I never stop. Never stop. I had someone call me yesterday and they were just so happy that, you know, I was an MMX educator. But, you know. You know, one thing they said to me, they were like, you know what? You know why you deserve this over everybody? Because when everybody was sleeping, you were grinding. When people deranked and stopped working, you kept working. When things were going on in the company and everybody was, you know, questioning what was going to happen, you kept working. When everything went wrong, the only person that we saw was Nano working. Nano working. Nano was still signing people up. Nano was still doing mornings with Nano. Nano was still waking up and doing his morning routine. Nano was still running events. When everybody stopped, you kept going. That's literally what my man was telling me over the phone. You're like, bro, that's why you deserve this over everybody. Because when when I was when when I was in my feelings, waking up late because everything in my business was falling apart. I would wake up and you had already did your whole morning routine and already did mornings with Nano. When everybody was taking time off and partying and in vacations, you were still working. When everybody was questioning what was going to happen, you were still working. I kept the faith through everything. Through everything, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what happened. I kept working. I never stopped. It didn't matter. I went through just as much stuff as anybody on this call. But I never stopped working. I never stopped showing up. I never stopped sharing the plan. I never stopped studying. I never, ever, ever stopped, regardless of whatever was happening. Because I understood that. I understood that on a different level that most don't. I knew I couldn't stop. I knew that that was a test. I knew that that was what was going to separate me from everybody else. Because everybody else, remember what I always teach. It's one thing to know that observe the masses, do the opposite. Because remember, just because we're in a business, right? I know that we say observe the masses and do the opposite because we're in a business and, you know. But, you know, you also got to do the same within the business. You got to observe what the masses do within the business and do the complete opposite. I saw people stop. I saw people stop posting and not grinding anymore. I said, yep, here it is. This is my chance. You see, I always, this is the beautiful thing about having perspective. I said, yes, I'm going through it, bro. This is hard for me too. But I said, if I stop like everybody else stops, then I would just be like everybody else. What is going to separate me from everybody else? What's going to separate me from everybody else is I got to go out there and work now. I got to keep doing my calls. I got to start waking up earlier now. I got to show that I still believe in times when everybody's losing belief. Bro, at one point, you can you if there's chairmen on this call, they can tell you themselves, bro. I was in that chat in January, February, March. Bro, and it was just me and my brother Fads, I remember. Back to back to back just posting after another, letting people know, yo, we here. People are enrolling into our business. We on calls, mornings with Nano, trainings, 300 people on an opportunity call, events, this. And everybody was like, yo, what's going on here? Ranks popping here. Let 
let me uh get rid of this guy real quick right here. And you know, it's the key though. You got to make sure that you keep the faith when everybody else loses faith. That makes you more deserving. And the reason why I tell you guys this is because at one point in your journey, okay, at one point in your journey, all right, at one point in your journey, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to. You're going to have to. A lot of people are going to quit. I'm telling you right now how it works. At one point in your journey, a lot of people are going to quit. A lot of people are going to go against you. A lot of people are not going to see what you see. A lot of times, you're going to be lonely. But in those times is when you have to keep the faith because that's the real test right there. That's going to be one of the biggest tests that you're going to have to face. And you're going to have to keep working. Even though it seems like it's not going anywhere. It, yo, it, it, it's so crazy that you could work for three months straight and still stay the, at, in the same spot. That has happened before multiple times. Working, working every day and staying at the same spot. Because those are just seasons. There's going to be winters that are longer than others. There's winters that'll be a month long. There's winters that'll be six months long. There'll be a winter that'll be dedicated to a whole year. There'll be winters that'll last you a whole year. But those are the best times, though. I'm telling you. The times of challenges and stuff like that, those were the moments that made me who I am today. If it wasn't for those moments, I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't have the success that I have today. I wouldn't have the connection with my creator the way I have it today. I wouldn't be the leader that I am today. And I wouldn't have the success that I have today if it wasn't for those times when I got tested. I posted it the other day. I said it. I said, bro, I failed way more than I've succeeded in this journey. Way, way, way more, bro. I failed way more times than I've succeeded in this journey. If you were to put a tally up of failures and success, my failure tabs would outdo my success by so much. It would literally not even be close of how much I failed. The ratio of the times I failed compared to how, how many times I've succeeded, easily, bro, my, my failures outdo and outnumber my, my successes. And you guys got to understand this. This is part of the journey. Okay. He said, he said to me, he said to me, he said, it's a curse for, for God to see you going in circles, staying in the same place. He said, that's a curse. It's a curse. He said something to me that, that this is how he finished it off for me. He said, he said, a lot of people want God, right? But in order for you to get that connect, I said, yo, how do I build? This is the question I asked him. I said, yo, bro, so how do I build a closer relationship with God? He said, seek his face, not his hand. Those were the exact words he told me. He said, Neno, if you want to build a better relationship with God, he said, seek his face, not his hand. And I said, it, it, explain that to me a little bit. I, I don't think I understand what you're saying. And I kind of had an idea of what he was saying, but I wanted him to explain it to me in his words. He said, seek his presence. How can you have him more in your life? Stop. Stop always seeking his hand, what he can give you. Most people seek his hand and not his face. Right? 
That's what he's saying. Don't just go to him when you need something. Okay, everybody, everybody just wants God's hands. They just want the hand, the hand, the hand, the hand, the hand, the hand, the hand. But they don't seek his face, which is his presence, his relationship, the word. Reading the word. We go back to it. Okay, you got to seek his presence. You got to speak the word. You got to talk to him, express your gratitude. Okay, it doesn't always have to be the hand. You should actually be seeking his face more than the hand. Because if you seek his face more than the hand, eventually God is going to want to give you the hand because you seek his presence. And by law, he's going to give you his hand. By law, he'll give you his hand because guess what? He's in your presence a lot more. So it's easier for him to give you his hand. When I heard that, I was like, damn. That is so true. That is the truth right there. We need to know. We need to understand this stuff. And if I'm honest with you guys, that one conversation I had with him, and there was a lot of other stuff because I actually asked him personal questions too that I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I won't share on this, you know, about other things in my life that I wanted to, you know, you know, figure out. But, you know, he that conversation made me very aware of a lot of things. And I wanted to come on this call and tell you guys how that conversation went with me, because I feel like a lot of us, you know, needed to hear that because a lot of the questions that I asked, you know, were for us, right? I said, you know, I kind of put myself in, you know, an overall situation of where we're all, where we all are. Cause I think about us when I was thinking about the questions that you can ask him, you know, I was thinking about us, but then I also asked them, you know, personal questions, you know, questions that have to do just with me. And he gave me some incredible answers with those as well. Okay, guys. So, you know, I want to make sure that you guys understand that at the end of the day, Faith is application. And application is the physical movement and the physical proof that you believe. That you have faith, that you trust that God is leading you in the right direction. Let this be the summer of massive application. You should get off every call and you should know what you're going to apply from every call. You should know what you're, you should be applying right now. One thing you guys should be applying every day, even before you get on mornings with Nano, is your morning routine. I know we all have different businesses and different plans and different schedules and different ways of going about things. But if there's one thing that we all need to have is a good morning routine. At least one to two hours dedicated alone in solitude to yourself where you're working on yourself, reading a book, listening to an audio visualization, and so on and so forth. Every day. Every single day. Okay? And it's important that we do that because, remember, speaking is not enough. It's not going to do enough. What What's going to do enough is the application of the information. Yoga midday hits. I'm actually, I actually want to start doing yoga as a part of my morning routine, I want to I want to incorporate a little 15, 20 minute yoga session into my morning routine. Um, but, yo, he, he dropped a lot of sauce for me yesterday, man. He, he even talked to me about something called mezzos. I don't even know if if I even spelled it right. I had to do my research on something called mezzos. Um, Something with mezzos. Because remember, he's studying like a lot of different stuff, man. And he was talking to me about how something called mezzos is what you speak creates your 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 atmosphere and a lot of stuff like that. Um, let me see what else, what other notes I have here. It said the word of God will get you through temptations. 
He also talked to me about pride. He talked to me about pride as well. He said, after pride comes fall. He said, for those people who have pride and don't want to learn and don't want to listen, after pride comes fall every time. So for those that you see that have a lot of pride and he said, after pride comes fall. After pride comes fall every single time. Literally. After pride comes fall. So there's a lot of people that I know out there that have pride. And he even went into talking to me about a little bit about um, obedience versus disobedience. He even showed me scriptures of, you know, disobedience being witchcraft. So if you don't obey the word and you don't abide by it, that's witchcraft because you're going against it. And I was like, bro, damn. It's 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 it's, it's tough stuff. Like I, I even remember he uh, he looked it up. He said this obedience. Let me see this obedience. It's like witchcraft. He said right here, it says for rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance, like the evil of idolatry, idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you as a king. He read that one to me yesterday. He said, rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as a king. He was reading this to me yesterday. And I was like, damn. I'm not, you know, when, when I reject the word or I go against it, because he was explaining to me like, yo, when you know you're supposed to be doing something and you go against it, you're disobedient, right? Like, um, and, and, and he started to, he started to break it down. And, and, and in reality, I wish I would have, I wish I would have um, voice recorded it because I was just taking, so there's a lot of things that he told me that I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was because we were literally screaming in each other's ears because we were, we were at a, like at a spot that had music on. So I really, you know, we were talking to each other, like he would be screaming in my ear right here. And then I would go scream in his ear. And then, you know, it was like, so, but it's so important that, you know, we understand this stuff. Like, you know, I'm not an expert in any of this stuff. I'm teaching, I'm, I'm talking to you guys about this stuff the same way that I'm being taught this stuff. I'm telling you, I'm here as a student. Okay. This is, I'm a student to this information as well. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm still a rookie, an, like literally a beginner to all of this stuff. But it makes so much sense because when I look back at my journey and I look back at a lot of the things that, you know, I was challenged in and all of this stuff, you know, um, I know why I was punished and why, you know, the reason why I was rejected in certain area was it was because of my disobedience. OK, it was it, it, it was it was it was something that I needed to read. It was something that I needed to understand. OK, and, you know, it's something that I want all of you guys to understand. OK, I need all of you guys to understand this stuff on a deeper level. OK, on a different level. All right. So it is very, 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 very important that we know the importance of the application of the information. Apply the information and you because once you know what you need to do, OK, you can be obedient because you know what's required of you. If you know that you got to do a morning routine every morning and you don't do the morning routine, then that's you being disobedient, which what does it say here? So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as a king or a queen. You're, you're, you're not, you're not, you've rejected the word. You've rejected it. 
you know you're supposed to be applying the information and you're not applying it. You're being disobedient. So that rejects you automatically. Boom. Done. You don't, you don't, you don't qualify. You don't qualify because you rejected the word of the Lord. You got to know this stuff. You got to be aware of this stuff. Like once you become aware of this stuff, okay, it's key. Can you share where to find the not to use crystals? Um, the crystals thing is a, I'll, I'll tell you guys for those that, um, what I've learned is this, I everything here comes from God at the end of the day. What I've learned is that you can't, Put the power of what God has into a crystal or to an object because everything comes from him. So there's no nothing wrong with using crystals. OK, the problem is, is if you idolize the crystals and you give all the powers to the crystals instead of giving it to the Lord. OK, so it's making sure that, you know, what's important. OK. All right. Knowing what's number one, knowing what's priority and then understanding that maybe that crystal can be used as an intention or as in a reminder. OK, so that's what I tell people is that when it comes to that. And that's what I've understood. OK, is that, yes, you can wear crystals. I have crystals, but I know where all the power comes from. OK, and remember, it's all about your intention behind the crystal at the end of the day. Okay, your intention behind it is the most important thing. Okay, so I don't think that it's a bad thing. It's only bad all the power and idolizing the crystal to be gives you your guidance and what gives you. No, no, no. Your guidance comes from a higher power. Okay, and, and, and that's it's all about the intention behind it. OK, so I don't I know there's a few people asking me about the crystals in there. I don't think there's anything wrong with the crystal at all. Um, there o there's only a problem with them when you idolize them and you think that all the power comes from them when it doesn't. OK, you can use them as a reminder. You can use them for certain intentions that can work in your favor. Absolutely. But just remember that all the power and everything comes from the man above. OK, like exactly. Like what about carrying a gratitude? Like. You know, I have a gratitude rock that when I go in my pocket, right, and I feel it, I practice gratitude, okay? I practice gratitude as a reminder to keep me in the feeling of gratitude, which is super key, okay? So it's important that you guys understand that don't, don't give all the power and the idolization to that. I think that's what, you know, Jasmine was explaining to you guys in the chat box. Don't idolize it. Don't give all the power to it, okay? Know where the power comes from and just make sure that you have the right intention behind those things. But, um, you know, that's good information all the way around. Um, you can ask other people about it as well. Um, I know there's different opinions about it, but I asked a very credible source about it, and that's what they told me. They said that there's nothing wrong with them because everything here comes from God, everything. It's just about your intention and understanding what's priority and what's not, um, and that's key. All right. Um, my brother Will was goody blessings. All right, fam. So with that being said, guys, that's everything that I wanted to cover with you guys here today. Honestly, um, you know, I had a really, really good conversation with him and, you know, I had a topic for today, but I was like, you know what? Let me let me just teach the family what I've learned from this conversation, um, because I don't want to forget to teach it to you guys for the moment. And just me hearing it again, you know, helps me understand it even better because, there's things that I need to apply. There's places in my life where I need, there's certain tests that I need to pass, right? And and, and that's what he was explaining to me. He was like, bro, you know, in life, you're going to have tests, you know, and, and you got to find out what's that one class, you know, is it love? Is it greed? Is it gratitude? Is it pride? What is that one class that, you know, you know that you need to pass, that you know you need to, you know, work on? And once you know that class, work on that. If you know you got to improve on your gratitude, Practice gratitude daily. If you know you need to improve on your trust, work on that trust. If you know you need to work on your faith, work on your faith. How do you work on your faith? Through the application of the information, 
right? The activity. So, you know, you got to find out, like, my best advice for everybody here um, is, you know, figure out what areas in your life need to be improved on. Do you need to improve on your faith? Do you need to improve on, you know, what are the things that you need to start working on? Okay, and start working on those things. If you know you're lacking faith, then you know that application is faith. And now you know that faith is application. Okay, your application is the physical proof that you have faith in that you believe. If you need to work on your trust, if you need to work on building that closer relationship, you know, you got to know the word, you got to speak the word more. Okay, you guys need to find out what these areas in your life are and stop focusing so much on you know, everybody else, don't, 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 don't let yourself get caught up in the fact that this person's making money and that don't, don't get caught up in comparing yourself to people on Instagram, because you'll be surprised these people that you guys think that are living these incredible lives on Instagram, most of those lives be cap. So you, you, you idolizing these people and you're, you're, you're inspired by these people, but some of these people's lives on Instagram are really cap. They're living, some people are living someone else's lives. Or they're around the right person and, you know, they're ba they're able to fly out to, to certain places and travel to certain places and be in certain cars and all this stuff. And a lot of that stuff is really cap. I promise you that. I promise you that a lot of it is cap because I know people personally that live a life on IG and then I meet them and they're not really like that. They don't really do a morning routine. They're not really tapped in. They, they, they're not really that, you know. They, they don't really live that. Everything I've ever showed you guys on the gram, I lived it for real, for real. And I paid for it myself. And I went to these locations myself. Now, have I had, you know, people around me that are, are rich and are wealthy and I have a great network? Absolutely. Absolutely. But because I had those things, right, I was able to create a, a reality for myself that now I want to continue to live in that reality. So it's important that you guys understand that faith is application. Know this stuff, have trust, belief, and believe in yourself because that's the most important thing that we can do. So if you guys got value from this, put a 777 in the chat box. Let's see who we got over here on IG with me, rocking out with me on IG. Man, we got the family here. Let's go. Appreciate everybody on IG hopping on. My brother Rafa's on the call with me this morning. Let's go. If you guys see... If you guys see Rafa on IG, um, Rafa actually, I don't know if you guys remember the story about my pitching coach. And I told you guys a story about how, you know, he had me doing the stairs and, you know, I only did what he asked me to do. And then because I only did that much, he made me do a few more. I told you guys a story the other day. I'm actually excited to, uh, he, he actually asked me yesterday to, you know, speak to some of the kids that he's training as well. So I'm excited to tell them the story now. Um, so they could know, cause you know, a lot of the principles and a lot of the, the work ethic that I developed very early on was because of the way that he was with me. You know, he taught me the true intention of hard work and being the hardest working person in the room and never allowing anybody to work harder than you. And, you know, just being that individual, he taught me that very, very early on. He installed that into me, um, before I was even a hard worker, before I was even, you know, heavy into like, self-development of, you know, myself as well. And, you know, he was a mentor to me before I even had a mentor. You know, he was my second dad. Like after my dad let me go, um, you know, um, at, at the age of 13, 14 years old, you know, I was always under my dad's wing and he was the one that passed me. And then he, my dad passed me over to Rafa and Rafa became that second dad for me as a pitching coach. And he was my pitching coach for, you know, 10 years plus, you know, and he was my literally my second dad. And, you know, I've learned so much from him. And, you know, I give a lot of the credit and a lot of my mindset and success to my brother Rafa. And he knows that. So I appreciate you, Rafa, if, you, if you're listening to this. But um, with that being said, guys, that wraps up today's call. I'm glad you guys got value. Um, make sure you guys go out there and apply and apply and apply. What's good, Giselle? How you doing? Will, what's good, fam? Uh I'm going to do a quick prayer for us, and then uh, we're going to get going, all right, fam? So quick prayer, and let's go. Father God, thank you so much for blessing us with this beautiful Thursday morning that we get to a chance to grow and we get a chance to elevate. 
we we learned some phenomenal information yesterday um, from an individual that you used as a vessel to speak the word through him to me. And today I was able to come on the call and share those words and that wisdom with the family. And we all needed to hear that 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 message today, God. And I just want to thank you for always, always finding the right things to say and finding the right things that we need at the time that we need it. Everything just always feels so divinely aligned with everything that we need to hear at a certain time. And everybody this morning needed to hear that message. We needed to understand the importance of the application of the information, the application of the word. And the fact that it's something that is being brought up, the fact that it's a part of our awareness is because a lot of us a lot of us are lacking that application, God. And I know that because that's the only reason that you would even be speaking that that word through someone else to me so that I can speak it to everybody. So we need to go out there and apply this information, God. And all that we ask is that you give us the strength that we need, that you give us the guidance, that you give us the clarity that we need and exactly what we need to apply and what we need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis so that we can go out there and be consistent over time. And we want to apologize forever you know, slacking off for, for not staying true to the word and lacking faith in times of tough times. You know, we didn't know any better, but now we do, God. And we appreciate you for the continuous guidance that you give us, your leadership, the word that you continuously teach us, and your patience, most importantly, with us, God. You, you, you really have patience. And today we learn that patience is love. And the fact that you have this patience with us shows us how much you love us and how much you you appreciate us and how much you want us to win. So we just want you to know that we love you just as much and if not more, and we appreciate you to the moon and back, God. So thank you so much for everything that you do for us. We love you and we appreciate you. Let's go out there and have an incredible day filled with application and being productive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, fam. So with that being said, guys, uh, that wraps up today's call. Uh, I love you guys so much. I hope you guys all have a blessed, blessed, blessed rest of your day. Um, tomorrow's the last day of the week, so we'll wrap it up. Um, and if for those who are hopping on for the first time, as you guys, if you guys don't know, um, Mornings with Nano will no longer be live on YouTube starting in July. Um, I just got promoted to be a mindset educator for MMX, which is Bob Proctor's program. I am the first educator for Bob Proctor's program that has been promoted. And I will only be doing mornings with Nano Tuesdays and Thursdays for free on YouTube. But if you want to have access to the mornings with Nano Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, um, you will have to become a part of the platform MMX. And um, you know it's probably going to be $30 a month to add it on. And um, I'm going to be probably getting into a lot of that next week, getting everybody into the program. So I'll keep you guys updated for that. But for those that know, you already know. And for those that didn't know, now you know. Um, so I'm excited for you guys to, to, to be a part of it. Um, it's going to be super organized. It's going to be huge. What's going to happen, you guys are going to have access to three calls a week um, with recordings and everything set up. So it's three calls a week. 12 calls for the month, you know, you pay $30 for those 12 calls. That's about $2.50 per call, $7.50 a week. Um, I, it's extremely affordable. Um, and you guys are going to be able to join that through our MMX platform. And no, you do not have to be a part of my company. No, you don't have to trade. No, you don't have to do crypto. You do not have to be an I am to be a part of MMX. This is a add-on outside of it family so i wanted to let you guys know but you know as you guys know i did mornings with nano um for free for three years um as you guys know we celebrated my three-year anniversary uh, a few days ago this week and um you know the the price has been upped you know this is what we work for and now there's a transitioning happening and now the information that you guys once had for free you know there's going to be a price behind this so on monday wednesday fridays I'm going to be teaching very specific topics, very intentional topics. When we start off, Tuesdays and Thursdays will be very general topics, okay? So Monday, Wednesday, Fridays will be very intentional, working towards something kind of topics. And um, Tuesdays and Thursdays will be on YouTube. Um, but eventually, those won't last too long because what I plan on doing is using Tuesdays and Thursdays to do it in Spanish as well, because I'm going to start taking my ta my talents 
to the Spanish market and start doing mornings with Nano in Spanish as well, guys. So uh, I'm going to be keeping you guys updated through this all week. Um, I'm finalizing the launch date. Um, it's either going to be July 1st, which is a Friday, or it's going to be July 4th, which is a Monday. So we're just finalizing the dates, and um, I'm going to keep you guys updated as to when um, the date is. You will definitely know by next week because that's when we're going to start doing everything. All right, fam? So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for always understanding and being willing to become a part of this journey with me because now we're about to take it up a whole nother level. Now there's going to be more funding for, like I said, retreats, events, tours, merch, so much things that, you know, were coming more out of my pocket that I needed help with. And now that funding is going to be happening. So there's a lot of people already looking forward to it. I've had so many people already tell me, bro, send me the link, send me the link, send me the link so we can run it. And, um, you know, I'm just excited for everything that's about to happen for us, fam. So I love you guys to the moon and back. Thank you guys for all your love and your support. And uh, keep those, start saving up those $30 from now. I don't want to hear anybody say like, nah, bro, I don't got $30. Because if you don't have $30 for your boy Nano to have access to this information, then we have a lot bigger problems to figure out if you don't have $30. $30 is all you need to have access to these calls for the whole month. That's literally a dollar a day for 30 days. If you don't got a dollar a day for your boy, then you never really loved your boy, to be real. That's 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 just me being 100%. If you don't got a dollar a day for your boy, then it is it's cool, you know, but it's going to be monthly. Yep. So I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Are you leveling up the videos on your YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not 100%. We're about to take YouTube up to a whole nother level. We're about to take YouTube up to a whole nother level. So um, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And you know, I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. Subscribe to the channel, though, fam. Turn on your post notifications. Like this video if you got it. Um, and if you guys got value from it, I appreciate all the likes and everything. If you want, guys want to check out the podcast, season four is on the way. Um, but if you want to check out season one through three, you can find it on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, iHeartRadio. And um, you can also find it as well on, what did I forget? SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Spotify, and Apple, fam. So love you. I appreciate you. Get those $30 ready, fam. Love ya. Let's get it. And yes, I'm leaving all the videos up. Season four on the way. <laughs>